La Nina dead in the water. It's been an interesting week, and I say La Nina dead in the water because technically that's exactly where we're talking about, the oceans. Let's look at the global oceans. This is a satellite picture taken from the first part of March through today, and they're colorized, the ocean conditions are, in terms of above or below average temperatures. So let's go down here into the ENSO region. I've highlighted three boxes. You could include the 3.4 region, which is right here, but it gets a little too cluttered. So I just kept the three main regions. Uh, we have lighter blues here in the ENSO 4 region. Still cooler than normal, but head toward neutral. Neutral phase there in 4. Warmth spreads over the 3 region and the 1.2 region. So we've seen La Nina dissipate in the oceans. And again, La Nina is colder than normal ocean conditions in this region. El Nino is the opposite. It's warmer than normal. Why does that matter? To be warmer than normal here, you create energy in that part of the ocean which translates itself into the atmosphere above, creates storminess, and then that impacts storminess downstream. If you take the storminess away from here by making it colder than average, then that also impacts storm flow downstream. For the United States, La Nina is a drought producer. El Nino is more of a surplus water situation. Well, bottom line here is that over the timeline for those four ENSO regions, we've seen a lot of warming over the last couple of months. Officially, La Nina is out of place, been kicked out, no longer there officially in the ocean conditions. So what does that mean if we're not in La Nina or El Nino? We're in a neutral state right now, and we'll see how long that takes in just a moment. But so far, I've talked about the ocean conditions. That's where we look for El Nino or La Nina. But the atmosphere above will respond to that, as I described. Is the atmosphere responding to this neutral phase just yet? No, it's not. This is a chiclet map, heat map, if you will, of SOI monthly values, Southern Oscillation Index. The SOI measures how the atmosphere just above the surface is handling this El Nino, La Nina situation throughout time. I go back to 1950, the blues on the map indicate when the atmosphere believes it's in La Nina, the reds on this chart believe when we're in El Nino. So down here at 2023 for February, a value of 2.3. Well, let's rank that historically and see where that puts us. So La Nina, 2.3, that's what an SOI is for 2.3, that's La Nina. For 2023, look, we're still at the top of the list here. Still very strong in terms of an atmosphere believing it's in La Nina throughout February. It's also behaved that way in early March, although decreased. So the oceans say we're neutral. The atmosphere says we're still La Nina. There's some waves called the MGL. We won't get into that in this video, really. But a couple of those will be happening over the next couple of weeks to several months. And that will continue to eliminate La Nina from the atmosphere, send it to neutral, or even perhaps promote an El Nino at some point. But if you look at the timeline for the SOI, we've been right in here, the La Nina phase. May 2020 was kind of topsy-turvy between El Nino neutral and, and La Nina phases, but it's been persistently La Nina matching the ocean conditions for roughly the last three years. Here's a forecast for you from the CPC. What are the odds of neutral versus El Nino conditions? And the seasons are listed down here below in the three month chunks. June, July, August were likely balanced between neutral chances and El Nino chances. Let's go to the end. October, November, and December neutral pattern is much less likely than an El Nino. El Nino odds are now climbing above 60% at that point. Still not locked in, not a guarantee. We'll see how things progress. Spring predictability barrier is a thing. It happens around late February through March into early April. That's when the forecast skill for these things is the lowest throughout the course of the year. So there's some error to be discussed, but La Nina is on the way out. Neutral is coming in. For how long? We'll see. But El Nino is going to be knocking on the door. So where are we and where are we headed? In terms of drought, it really kicked off roughly about three years ago. And that's when we really saw it escalate across the country. Uh, it, and all the water out to the west is great. We still have a drought footprint there, though. For the central and southern plains, we have a lot of drought. That's where the deepest drought numbers are. That's where the, the lowest soil moisture is. It's where the greatest ecological, uh, vegetative, uh, livestock, wildlife, those impacts are. That's where the biggest impacts are. And we're talking about a huge hole here, a huge deficit. So same idea. Let's see how deep in the hole we are in terms of drought. Well, in Northern California, Southern Oregon, sections of the plains from the Northern Plains all the way down through South into Texas, these deeper reds on the map represent 12, 16 to 20 to 24 inches drier than normal. 
This map includes all the recent water for the west, all the recent water for the northern plains, all that snowfall. We are still, in some cases, two feet of rainfall, two feet of total moisture, drier than average since the La Nina kicked off. That is quite a hole to dig out of. It's going to take time for the central and southern plains particularly to come out of this. But by leaving La Nina behind, we're turning the corner on the pattern. We're turning the corner on the drought. I believe in a lot of cases the drought is the worst that it will be right now and that we'll see improvements going forward. The slowest improvements probably happen central and southern plains. Let's take a look at what this could all mean by the summer. We'll go through the spring as a transitional period. We'll see what El Nino wants to do, what neutral conditions want to do, how quickly the atmosphere wants to respond to these changes. But by the summer, let's just take a look at, just hypothetically, summer precipitation for all neutral seasons. So I went back to 1950, grabbed all the neutral summers when Enso was neutral. El Nino and La Nina, when the conditions were not there. So neutral years. And this is the precipitation, percent of average, that showed up. Again, since 1950. So it's a pretty sizable database there. A surplus of water happened in a few cases out to the west. Just about everybody else on the map, with the exception of South Texas, which was a little wetter than normal, everybody else fell within a normal 90 to 110 percent of precipitation range. That's with neutral. Same idea. Went back to 1950. Any summer that indicated El Nino, I plotted on the map. Now you do see a surplus across the west. In some cases, greater than 130% of normal precipitation will fall in a summer with El Nino. We have some drier pockets in south Texas, but by and large, if you look east of the Rockies, by and large, we're right around average to about 80% of normal. The Rocky Mountain region in the west is far wetter in summer with El Nino. It's too early to say whether or not El Nino will be kicked into full gear and the atmosphere is responding when we produce something like this this summer. But even a neutral phase versus La Nina can be valuable. We'll begin to get ourselves out of this drought. But for the central and southern plains from this map, as you can tell, there will be some benefits with El Nino. Neutral phase is right around average. Without a huge surplus in that region going through the next several months, that's why I think the drought will be most persistent there and we'll need to be patient in that regard. Once we hit the fall and winter, it's a different story, and El Nino brings everybody quite a bit of water, especially the south. That's just kind of a quick run-through of the current status of La Nina, the former La Nina, the neutral pattern, and where we're headed if El Nino decides to kick in versus a neutral phase by the summer. I'll have kind of the short-term weather impacts. We're watching that March 16th, 17th, that St. Paddy's Day storm. We'll do so in the next video called The Daily Shower. This is just an update on La Nina. I'm Matt Makins. That's the data as I see it. Blessings to you and yours.